Hey, Lab Code Agents, it's Tristan again. We've got Dan with us. What's up, Dan? Thanks for putting this together. And today we've got the guys from Chime, Randy and Andrew. We're going to be talking about automation and how it fits into your business. Now, we're going to be showing you how it fits into your business using Chime. Obviously, you can get some of these tools outside of using Chime. We're going to use them just so that we can show you the possibilities of what's out there. And since myself and Nick are always talking about leveraging your business, we even have a, a whole presentation called Leverage is the New Hustle. We want to show you exactly how to do that really by having Chime as the centerpiece to this, as the main CRM and marketing arm behind this. And it's a beautiful thing. And for that, I want to just go right into it, Andrew. Thanks for being with us. Yeah. Randy, thanks for being with us. Let's talk about automation. All right. Yeah, Perfect. let's do it. So I think a lot of people, when they think of automation, they, they stop thinking about it after drip campaigns, right? So a new lead comes in and you automate a text message, and that's as much automation as most people uh, that's about as far as they get into their business with automation, but there's so many places within your business that can actually benefit from using automation. Um, folks usually don't get an opportunity to see that when you do a product demo, whether it's Chime or what have you. You're typically spending about a half an hour going through some high level um, conversations around the product as a whole. Uh, now today, we've got Andrew on here, who's the most senior uh, account executive at Chime, and so he knows the platform in and out, and so he's going to take a deeper dive into the level of automation that Chime can actually bring to your business uh, from more of a 360-degree perspective, um, so much more than just the text goes out and that that's it, right? So um, with that being said, Andrew, why don't you fire up the screen share and uh, so he knows okay. and lead the way. All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and get us off. You can all see my screen, I'm assuming, here. Um, so just like Randy is saying, uh, a lot of times people assume that automation is simply just a drip campaign. But there is a whole lot more to that. Where we start is on the lead capture side, making sure that your response to that lead is as fast as possible um, without, uh, without any delay because that speed to lead is so, so important. And so it starts on that automated welcome email or welcome text. When someone's on your website, we want to make sure that they feel like they know how to access the information, how to do a home search. So that's just very like the tip of the iceberg, um, you know, 101 for making sure that people know um, that you're there and how to communicate with you. And so where, uh, where we want to start here, um, as far as the automation goes, is with, uh, with property alerts. So really when someone comes onto your website, they uh, are going to be doing uh, cer certain searches for properties. And what the system here is doing is capturing all that data. So what they're looking at, price range, areas, all of that, to build a profile for that customer. Now what's going to happen is that customer is then going to start to receive property alerts automatically that fit the type of search that they've already done. Go ahead. Andrew, quick question. Yep. Uh, when they're coming in, let's say from realtor.com, from a portal, from Facebook, from Google, uh, what type of data is gathered so that uh, the automation is, is in our favor? Yeah, so um, anytime those leads come in, we're also going to be capturing what type of properties that customer has looked at, right? So, so we'll, know, um, we'll know that information already, but the whole purpose of that welcome email or welcome text is to draw people to, to your site because that's how we can build a larger profile about them. And so it's all about funneling them to that site so that profile continues to build, and that's when that, uh, the, automated, the automated process is going to start. And we can okay. start to adjust. We can start to adjust with them based on maybe their search criteria is starting to change, uh, price range, those type of things. Okay, in so regards these, to that, how do you get them to, or do you get them to opt in to having us communicate with, with them through text or uh, in, in that form? Because I know that's a hot topic, right? Yeah, yeah. So when they're pointed over to the website, then they will have a forced registration. 
right? That forced registration is going to allow them to continue with Facebook or Google, which is what 90% of people do because it's easy, um, or they can create an account, right, for that, for that website. Okay. Once they've registered, that, uh, they're, they're opting in to that communication. What's nice, though, is that all of these automated alerts, automated property alerts, market reports that we'll dig into, um, and text have the option for them to opt out if they want. And that's the, that's the important part is that they, a lot of people don't realize they're opting into that communication, but they do have the option for, for legal reasons to opt out. Okay, cool. And Andrew, we, we, will you cover quickly what information or what data points we actually capture through the registration process? because that does mm -hmm. actually feed into some automation options um, a little bit later. Absolutely. Yeah, so when they're registering, they're going to, we're going to find out what their timeline is to buy. If they're already working with an agent, if they already have lending in place, a lender that they prefer. Um, and so those are going to be the very basics along with their contact information. That's, that information then is part of their profile in the CRM. And then we continue to build upon that profile based on what they're doing on your site, what they're looking at, the type of searches they're saving, properties they're favoring, those type of things. Okay, good. Yeah, I don't think you're ever going to get through the whole presentation because I have so many questions here. So hold on. <laughs> uh, Far away. So Far here's, away. Here's my question in regards to when they're coming in because now, now I'm thinking, well, let's, let's bring in uh, dynamic ads for real estate, which is DARE, right? For those listening in, DARE <laughs> is what... Facebook and Instagram use to, to be able to remarket to a database and then show yep. them relevant properties so that they re-engage and it's dynamic. So it changes as they go. That's AI, right? To me, that's AI. That's real artificial intelligence uh, because it's growing. Now, here's the thing though. Um, when these people are re-engaging in our sites on Facebook and Instagram, how, how is your artificial intelligence in Chime, how is it that it's identifying what they're doing and how it's responding to it? Yeah, so when they're engaging with those advertisements, that's also feeding into their profile, right? And so within their profile, within the CRM, we know what they're clicking on, what they're spending time looking at. And so that helps adjust those property alerts as well and those future um, those future retargeting ads right so if they see an ad it shows them properties that are relevant to the type of searches they've already done by clicking on a specific property our system is now learning with them and saying okay this is a good hot hot property let's okay. send them more like this and all right so it's always always adjusting so besides it sending more properties and relevant information mm -hmm. what's up with any texts that they may get, any emails uh, based on how much activity uh, they're having? Because we've seen that in other CRMs, right? So we want to be fair to everybody. But how is yours different? Is it more engaging? Is it uh, less? How does it know when to send out stuff? Yeah, so that's going to be through that, that AI, the AI bot, which will, engage, uh, which will engage with them on the site, but also send those automated those automated texts to qualify that lead in and keep fishing, keep finding out um, if they are ready to start looking at properties. Um, but, uh, but from there as well, based on, based on their, their, that agent's activity or that customer's activity, you can set up in the CRM automated uh, triggers for specific marketing plans. So these marketing plans are all built within the system and mm -hmm. based on what that customer is doing on the site, you can say, all right, if that customer has clicked on this property this many times, or it's been this long since they've been on the site and suddenly they're back on, I want this, pro I want this smart plan to start. I want this marketing plan to be enabled. And that's all that's, happening automatically. That's on our end? We can have you, to turn that on? Or is that something that's automatically done? Can you uh, so, pull up the, um, the uh, settings for the AI assistant on here? And while you're, while you're oh, turning yeah. that on, the AI assistant, uh, what are you guys running? Um, and I don't know if you can answer this or not, Andrew, but I just want to know what, what you're running your AI, AI off of. Is it uh, directly through, through Google where you're going through TensorFlow or is it you're running a different company like Dialogflow? What are you guys running your AI off of? So I, I actually have that answer for you, Tristan. Um, 
our product guy let me know that we are running it through Google's other not not TensorFlow, but the other item that you mentioned that Google oh, dialogue um, offers, Dialogflow. Cool. Awesome. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. Well, that's good. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to understand the dynamic of that suite. And this mm -hmm. this is the AI assistant, Andrew? Yeah, this is. these are the settings for that AI assistant. I think oh, you we can, can adjust. We can change the name of our assistant? <laughs> yeah. No yep. way. Ha! Mm -hmm. That's cool. <laughs> I didn't know that. That's pretty cool. So yeah. I can be like, <laughs> yeah, my assistant, Tristan. Oh, wait, that's me. Dude, that's kind of cool. <laughs> I uh, like that. You know what they say, Tristan? If you don't have an assistant, you are the assistant. Yeah. Uh, dude, I'm going to name mine Alfred just to mess with people. <laughs> Alfred Pennyworth? Yeah. I, I love, love that. It. All right. So let's say Alfred Pennyworth is reaching out to my people. I can determine what lead sources they reach out to and which ones they shouldn't. Mm -hmm. so if exactly. I say, if I say, Andrew, I only want, uh, I only want Alfred to reach out to realtor.com leads because, you know, I just signed up for market reach and those are really good. I can be like just those or Facebook lead ads or whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. Got it. That's exactly right. So that way, that way your sphere of influence and your referrals and your past clients aren't uh, being communicated with by, you know, Alfred in this case, right? So if, I upload, this, if I upload a whole mess load of past clients, they won't, mm -hmm. they won't be contacted, right? Cause that's one of the problems I have right now. Well, partially mm -hmm. when I'm uploading this whole list, it's like now they're being reached out to by some of my AI or automated processes. And I'm like, no, that's stupid. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't want that, right? So, so our AI assistant was made very specifically to give you the opportunity to make that call for yourself, right? Whether you do or do not. Cool. Andrew, yep. do you have any examples of the AI engaging with some of the clients just so I can see what it looks like back and forth? Like, is that that's saved into the contact information, right? Yeah, I mean, so this is this is going to be an example. I've got some screenshots of of the uh, of someone being on the website, and uh, you know, this is where you'd see your name, Tristan. Um, but uh, and some people, depending on the agent, they do want to disclose, hey, I'm I'm an assistant or I'm an artificial you know assistant or robot reaching out mm -hmm. to you. So it just depends on your personal preference there, because that's what's yeah. nice about being able to personalize that. Course. But then it's going to continue to pop up those chat bubbles to see if they can get this person engaged yeah. until the person responds. And at that point, the chat bot is saying, okay, this is the response I received. Uh, this is the, this is going to be the best response back. And it's going to sit there and chat with them. And I mean, this conversation can go on as long as the customer wants it to. And would you say, and this is just so I understand this better, because you do this, you guys do this more than I do. Would you say that it's better to say, hey, look, it's, a, it's Tristan chat and not an actual person on this form so that we don't freak them out? Or is it okay to freak them out and be like, yep, that's me. Let's go back and forth. And <laughs> I would say that in our experience, uh, or I guess maybe it's because of the dynamic of how our AI assistant interacts with people. Do you want, do you want the AI assistant to be to look like it's somebody else, whether it's a machine or someone else, that's less important, but we don't want the consumer to think that they're interacting directly with you because you have the opportunity to engage the consumer directly yourself. However, it's going to appear in a different conversation, right? So it so would look as if you're having two different chats. All right. It makes sense. So I would say this section right here, I think you guys are right on, which is, you know, approach it as a chat and let them know it's a chat bot versus an actual person. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. where, where I think it changes is on the text. If I'm texting them, I would want it to be more of my assistant type text sure. right? Then rather than a chat bot, right? Or a text bot. Mm -hmm. Would you agree or am I off? I no, I think that makes a lot of sense. Cool. Yep. And our, and our AI assistant does interact via text and website chat. So it's not just dependent upon the person coming to your actual website um, for, because that would render it useless for a realtor.com or Zillow lead as soon as they register. You kind of 
exclude that speed to lead element, but because our AI assistant is actually engaging via text message as well, your leads coming from Realtor and Zillow and, and whomever else are also being interacted with uh, mm -hmm. uh, via text message. All right. So then when it comes to automation in, in the real estate world of what I'm looking for when it, when and this is specific to CRMs and marketing, right, which is what we're looking at right now. I'm looking at property alerts that are that are being set up automatically, right? Which is already here, which you've got. That's cool. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing that I like from the property alerts, though, is that it should phase out if nobody's using it because I don't want to spam people forever, right? Um, yeah. How does that work with you guys? Do you guys phase out these alerts, or are you still continually bombarding these people forever? No, that's a really good question. And uh, what we found is that most systems, uh, you, you're, once you're set or once that customer's set on the property alert, they, they're going to get that consistent, you know, maybe once a day, once a week um, property alert. But with ours, it's constantly learning and reacting to that customer. So let's say that um, the customer's put on that property alert. You can always override that property alert and set them up on a different one. Um, however, with that, those automated property alerts, if they stop opening those messages, then the, customer, the system will automatically, just like you said, phase out how frequent those messages are going out to prevent the spam and also keep that email deliverability integrity up. Um, does now, also, at that point, well, I was talking to no, Randy earlier. Does it, does it also send out somebody to their house and knock on their door? Is that right, Randy? <laughs> That's the AI chat bot. That's yeah. called the chime yeah. bot, right? <laughs> We have a drone come in and it flies into their front door and everyone can see it on their ring doorbell. And it, it's actually a piece of paper taped to the front and it's Tristan's face. Tell me when that happens so I can sign up for that. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, we're, we're already yeah. using your face for it. So you're just a friendlier looking guy than the rest of us. Yeah, that's so funny. All right. Sorry, Andrew. I just had to add that. So no, you're um, good. Please, please be out, right? I think it's important as part of artificial intelligence too. Well, and, and along with that, too, is when that customer opens up that email, maybe it, it has been a year, right? And they're receiving these, these property alerts every once in a while. If they click on that property alert and they, they open up that email, they look at a property, then they're going to be bumped right back up to a more frequent alert because the system has now identified them as being potentially back in the market. Got so those, that frequency is going to bump back up until – Again, if they stop opening those emails again, it'll phase back out. And so it's customizing that experience specifically to that one customer. Perfect. Perfect. I like that. All right. So, so that artificial intelligence is helping out by identifying their actions and then taking action based on that. All right. Good. That's what we yeah. like, we like to hear. So then what, is, what does it come down to when it's a seller? It's not a buyer. I don't need the property mm -hmm. alerts. What happens if a seller comes in? Is it the same process? Yeah. The property alerts or what do they get? No, so that's going to be on the market snapshot side. So this is really cool because what this is focusing on, <clears throat> you can see here my market snapshots. This is focusing specifically on sold properties, right? Because what do sellers want to know? They want to know what's going in their market, what's selling and how quickly. So um, I'll show you an example here of a, of a market snapshot. Right, so this would be my profile picture, whatever I have loaded here. You can customize this message. We're not going to lock you into a certain you know, a chime message there, but this is going to give you some good market information. These go out every 30 days. If you want to see more details on that reporting, but yeah. then it's going to show you the listings right here. This is really, really powerful information um, because this is what people like to see, especially if they're in the market to sell their property. They want to view more properties. It's going to direct them right back to your website. It's keeping everything. All of these, all of these alerts are being funneled right back over to your site to to keep that traffic up and to keep everything close to you. All right, perfect. Okay, I love that. Um, yeah, yeah, and and this is something that not a whole lot of people, not a whole lot of uh, systems offer, and so you know that that's a, a big value there. Um, on the uh, on the market report side right so that's going to be along the same lines but those market reports you can set where you want that market report to be coming from 
So if that, uh, if that market report is for a specific city, a zip code, a neighborhood, you can zero down on, on those specific areas. And depending on who you have included, you can have multiple contacts in one lead record. So if you have both husband and wife or whoever, yeah. it'll address them both and they'll send them that market report. All right, and this is assigned, I mean, like if it comes in as a buyer or a seller, these are assigned automatically based on where they're coming in from? Uh, so these market reports are not going to be assigned automatically. The, the agent would need to say, okay, this person wants this. This is, these are going to be more, more for your leads that you've engaged with, right, to find okay. out what it is they're interested in. And if they want a, a market report zeroed in on their specific neighborhood, depending mm -hmm. on the, the market that you're in, it makes more sense to do the zip code or whatever. Okay. Um, but these are going to be set based on what the agent sets up for that customer. The property okay. alerts, though, that's what's going to be automated based on the customer's behavior. All right, cool, cool. So let's say I got some sellers. I set them up with this. Great question on this. Uh, we're always saying if things can change as the consumer changes. So let's say the seller says, well, let's say they start looking for other areas. Does it automatically catch on and start sending them information for that or not yet? Uh, not yet. No, so with the market snapshot, that's going to be static to the area that they've uh, that, that we've determined. As an agent, you can determine what that that, that area looks like, and you can always go and edit that and change that if you want. Um, but typically, when they're selling, it's because they are at a property that uh, you know a, a specific property address, and we want to show them all the data for that surrounding their specific area for yeah. what's selling. So you. So you can see that you can add a new snapshot there. So if you wanted a snapshot sent for multiple areas, I mean, by all means, but like Andrew said, if you're looking for the, the most comparable properties to where that person is actually living today, then you want to be more specific than, you know, Riverside County as a whole. Yeah. All right. Cool. Cool. All right. So we've got property alerts, Market, would you consider this market snapshots or market reports? Uh, so this is the market snapshot, which is focusing on the sold data, sold information. Okay. And then the market and, reports, is that part of property alerts or how does that work? Now, so the market reports, those are going to be, again, you can, you can focus on the specific area you want those to come from mm -hmm. uh, for those market reports, but that's going to narrow down or, or summarize the average price per square foot. Um, that's on the market right now, days on the market, uh, trends within the market, how it compares to this time last year, th that type of data, which is, and that's all automated to go to that customer. So we can send those out to our, our listing, uh, our sellers that we have, so they keep up to date with everything. Mm -hmm. All right, well, let's, let's talk about smart plans because that's uh, yeah. in, in Keller. So obviously I'm a Keller Williams agent. So I keep on hearing on command the smart plans, right? And yeah. it's, a, it's a hot, hot topic right now, but I think yours works differently than the command smart plans. And so yeah. your plans, your plans, I think they change as, as people engage and stop engaging. So one thing that I was, I was uh, happy to hear, which is this, and this is part of the automation, like the real automation here. If the AI engages with the buyer, sometime along a year or six months or whenever. And it notes that this person is out longer. It's going to make those adjustments automatically and then reach out to them at a later time, right? It won't bombard them automatically. It won't, it won't be like, Hey, this is a priority. It'll just slowly let them go and nurture them. Am I right? Or did I just blow that completely off? <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. Oh, go ahead, Randy. Oh, simply saying you're, you're right on the money there. So the AI assistant is, is very much a conversational uh, piece of artificial intelligence that's understanding the consumer's needs and wants and, and desires and responding accordingly, accordingly. And that then will transition into the appropriate smart plan. So the three dispositions that we have today for the AI assistant is somebody is, is a hot lead, right? Someone who's interested in talking uh, today or very soon. Somebody who's a long-term nurture, like you mentioned, or somebody who's non-responsive. So based off of those three different dispositions, 
we move that person into the appropriate smart plan. Yep. Perfect. All right. So then, then it happens again, more automated where I don't have to be worrying about this all the time because one of my, yep. your hands off. Yes. One of my biggest concerns is always handing these leads out and I don't know it where they're at in that life cycle, right? And mm -hmm. yep. out to agents and then having agents, and there's nothing wrong with this, it's part of business, but having agents focus on the low hanging fruit, right? This is why we always sure. uh, uh, leverage as the new hustle, because this is allowing us to, to really scale and grow like we wanna grow. And if we're able to rely more on technology like this to be able to help us nurture these leads, Help us nurture mm -hmm. our database. It's uh, it's definitely better. So, are we able to then create auto triggers, or does this happen automatically? So you've got both options, right? So we've got the uh, AI chatbot that's going to help determine those type of things, but then we've yeah. also got an entire library of these marketing plans that have um, all these automated steps built into them. So automated emails, automated texts, reminders for yourself to do certain things. Those are all part of, of those smart plans, but the best part about those, or one of the good things about those is you can customize those to, your, to yourself, right? So if you don't mm -hmm. like the way that a certain paragraph is phrased or you don't like what a certain text says, you can customize those to yourself. You're not set to use what, our, what we've created for you and what our coaches and things have, have compiled. Um, but above and beyond that, are all of the automated trigger options you can have set in the system. And we help you, uh, when you first are setting, getting this all set up, we will go through with you and say, okay, what, how would you like this, or when would you like this particular smart plan to start, right? So we get a few different preferences for you. And mm -hmm. then uh, based on the customer's activity on your website, or based on the agent's activity in the CRM, you can have automated triggers set to, to react pretty much to any, any time you do something with a lead. And so that's really, really important to save steps. For example, if you're moving a lead into a new pipeline status, that right there could trigger a, 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 a smart plan. If you move a lead into a new group or you add a tag to a lead, right? Um, Those actions right there can trigger any one of our smart plans that you predetermined you want to go for you know, your referrals right? If you move a lead into the referral group, that right there can start a smart plan for you. And you'll know by moving it into that group that that customer is now going to be put on that particular smart plan. Got it. So there, there are a whole bunch of triggers along the way. So what I'm seeing here, um, here's here. And for those of you that are listening in right now, just a little quick lesson on, on artificial intelligence, because we do, we do hear a lot of companies say, Hey, look, there's a, uh, there's what we call true AI and uh, fake AI, right? And <laughs> there's always in the middle. There's in the middle. And so I just want to well, explain to people that are listening in, your product, or I guess it's a combination of products, is a combination of true AI and kind of like um, some automation. And mm -hmm. the true AI comes into play where we're looking at the dynamic ads for real estate, as people engage, uh, it's, yeah. um, it's machine learning, right? Because you've tapped into what Facebook has. And it's, re it's, it's learning right. along the ways. And it's like, oh, well, Andrew, Andrew's looking at this and this, but Randy's looking at this. And now I know what to do based on what they're uh, engaging with. And then the automated part are those triggers, those triggers that are happening along the way, which is, hey, if they do this, then this, right? So that's more automated. So mm -hmm. just that's right. And the differentiation between both, uh, there's the real AI that's happening and the automation, uh, which is beautiful yeah. how you guys have brought this together because it's it's key. It's key key to our success in in all businesses, specifically in what we're doing in real estate. Yep. No, I think you you hit it spot on. And, uh, and I like that you talked about more of those triggers because um, with automation, there is a certain element of, of planning how you want to treat your customer, right? So as an agent, I want to know, I want to know like, am I, a, am I an aggressive agent or am I more laid back? Do I want, to, what type of messaging do I want to go out? That's what you have to kind of decide when you're getting this all set up, 
right? So you're catering that messaging for your customers that fits your style. Um, now we'll show you best practices based on what we've based on what we've studied here, but you don't you don't have to conform to that. So you can go in and set your own set triggers here, and this is something that our team helps you set up when you first register. Andrew, but um, yeah, I'm going to pause you really quick. Uh, yep. Two things, Randy, when you're responding on the chat, make sure to drop down the menu where it says all panelists and attendees. Because you uh, just wow. And then the second thing is. Uh, Dustin says, can somebody reach out to him from Chime? Because he's currently on sync. So just take note yep. of that. Um, just, I, I'm going to just take control really quick just to differentiate sync versus Chime. So I've had sync since 2012, almost, almost from the very first time they came out. I was like one of their first 100 people. And um, it, it was great and it's still great. But when you bring in Chime and Commission Zinc, there's no, there's no comparison. Uh, just the automation and the AI time over the last two months that I've been using it and I've been seeing what's behind it. Um, at one point, Commission Zinc was the Ferrari uh, of the industry, and now it's Chime. Chime is it's an all-in-one marketing platform that brings in AI automation, Facebook lead ads, Google, everything you can think of. And the other question that I get all the time, just before you ask it. Am I still using Ylopo? And yes, I'm still using Ylopo. They're working really closely with Ylopo to integrate because I love what Ylopo does with their Dare ads and their, um, their form of virtual, I'm sorry, artificial intelligence, which is uh, Raya. And I think once you combine both, when you allow a strong platform like Chime to work as your CRM, Right, and you have a strong marketing arm like Ylopo when you bring them together, uh, then you're having the best of both worlds, in my opinion, uh, which beats yep. the shit out of sync. So anyway, just one. <laughs> now you can continue, Andrew. Yeah. How do you, how do you really so, feel? Tell us how you really <laughs> feel. Dude, I just hate yeah, people no sugar, no, stuff, and I get to see everything, right? So. Yeah. I know I know it works because we live this on a daily basis. Like I have to test out every yeah. every tool out there for real estate. So when I see something that I love, I push for it. Awesome, makes sense. Oh, we love that. So um, to to kind of keep going here with these these triggering behaviors. So you've got several different ways that you can automatically have these plans start. But in addition to that, if a lead engages with that smart plan. You also want to have options to automatically pause that campaign, right? So if someone responds right. to an automated email, we want to put a pause on that campaign because now you're supposed to be having two-way communication now with that customer because they responded to a message. We don't want more automated messages to keep going to that customer. And so you've got options in here to automatically pause those campaigns as well. And you can specify for what that automated pause looks like. Okay, so that's, uh, that, that's another key factor here. So auto pause when the lead reaches out. Uh, if, you, if you dispositioned a phone call that you've talked to that person, okay, it's detecting that two-way communication, let's go ahead and pause it. Now, as, as, a, um, as a smart plan is working, you can, you can set conditional questions, right? So it's catering this experience, the smart plan experience to the customer. So let's say that the customer um, already has a lender in place. Well, if, if that, so this is where the conditional questions come in, if they do have a lender in place already, let's send them this message. If they don't, let's send them this information with, uh, with all my, my preferred lender's information, right? That's all automated. So it's catering, again, that experience to based on what the customer has selected on the website when they registered. Um, also, um, if you, uh, based on, based on the, the specific preferences you have, you can change the exact time of day that these messages are going out, um, how long you want it to wait for the next step to go out. This is all stuff that uh, you, can, you can adjust to adjust your preferences. Now, once a full smart plan has taken its course, let's say you've got a smart plan that went for uh, 250 days, right? So over time, we've been nurturing this customer, zero response whatsoever. Well, once that campaign has taken its course, you can choose to have that, that customer then put in a new pipeline status. Okay, so I want to move leads to this status now because they, they, they haven't engaged. We don't know what they're doing. 
from there, if you want, because remember one of the triggers in the system can be by moving a lead into a new pipeline. So the system's automatically moving this lead now that has gone dark into a new pipeline, which is now starting a new smart plan. Okay, so that new smart plan now is being catered to those who you lost contact with. And Got that it. might be one message every six months for the next 10 years. Whatever you wanna do, we'll let them go, we'll let them be, but we still wanna remind them who we are. And so you can just keep uh, one, one smart plan to the next smart plan catering to that specific customer. So that's gonna be uh, something that is, is a big benefit as well. I love that, dude. All right, so yeah. let's go to the next section. Uh, and that's yeah. uh, when we as agents have open houses, right? Mm-hmm. How, how does it fit into that world? Because, I mean, I'm working on, on my own just lead engagement, artificial intelligence, right? We call it true AI. And we're, we're trying to decide which route we go besides the online lead automated por- portion of it. Uh, you have open house registration. How does the artificial intelligence or the automation triggers work with that? And show, if you can, show me that process or just show yeah. me the registration page. Yeah, absolutely. So, so this is going to be more on the automation side, right? Because when you have a new open house coming up, then you can go ahead and enter the information about that open house that you want. Pull in the, uh, the, uh, the front elevation of the home, a nice picture. When you've got that open house going, though, or before you have it going, you can predetermine what questions you want to ask people as they arrive to that open house. So okay. open up the app on, your, on the iPad or, or if you've got a laptop. Have that there at the, when they first walk in. And the customer, this is what, what they're going to see. For that open house, they're going to see the questions that you've predetermined over here that you want to be asking them. So their name, email address, and phone number, usually at the very minimum. Um, so you're going to have that information along with um, uh, when, so when they're registering, they plug in that info. And mm-hmm. what the system is going to do is automatically um, put that lead natively into your system as a brand new lead with the source being open house. Okay. okay, so now you've got that source defined, but mm-hmm. also tagging it with the address that it came from. Okay, so one, two, three, Common Street. So now you can easily go in and find all the leads that came from that specific open house. Now, with that new lead coming in, if you want that to trigger a welcome email, a welcome text, or even a full-blown marketing plan for those customers based on that one open house, that's very easy to set up. Um, Something that I've seen agents do, which I think is really cool, is to put a delay on that welcome email or text. So if someone comes to that open house, they register, the agent doesn't want that welcome email or text to go to that customer right away, right? Because they're, they're talking to them or walking through the house with them. Uh, put a delay of 45 minutes on that or 30 minutes. So then 30 minutes later, that's when that initial welcome text goes to that customer. So thanks for visiting. It was great to meet you. Um, you know, whatever messaging you want to have going there. But all that information, all that data is being stored right here into the system so it can trigger those automated tasks that you want to happen based on that open house registration. Awesome. I love that. All right. So then after this, they go in, they're sent properties. Does the automation still work at that point? Does the AI then identify what triggers? Are they looking for more property? Are they not? Did they stop? Will it get texted automatically? How does that work? Yeah. So this is going to work similarly to what the uh, forced registration is on the website, right? Because these are questions that are, that are building that profile again for that customer and then planning the, the automation that goes with that and the type of messages they're going to get. Uh, the if yes, if no responses, um, whatever they answer on these is going to determine the type of, uh, the type of automated messages from that point on. Perfect. All right, guys. I, I love that. So then yeah, and I want to point out how just impactful this is simply because how many open house sign in sheets do you think are lost? I mean, how many times do you think an open house sheet comes back to the office and never gets plugged into your CRM? Here's the issue, dude. It's, it's the follow up. It never happens, right? Most of most just, yeah, it doesn't exist is well, what happens after? And if you're telling me, Andrew, Randy, that this is automated and they're going to be followed up with automatically. 
they're probably going to be yep. reaching out to me at that point. And that's what, that's what I'm trying to solve with our, our artificial intelligence tool, right? It's not an all inclusive thing like yours, right? Um, which is super cool. This connects to the IDX, it sends property, it engages with them, it's deep, uh, which I love. So <laughs> how, is there, is there something that's set that goes out automatically that we can tweak or we can automate or how does it work? Is it, show me that part. Yeah, absolutely. So um, with, with any sort of registration that comes in, right, regardless of where it comes from, let me get in back over here to my settings. You've got a series of, of automated email messages that you have going out. So that automated welcome email, this is where you can go in and, and edit those, those things, make changes to those, those, um, those emails, um, customize the messaging for that. Or if it's within, uh, within the, the texting, text template, okay? This is where you have your auto, auto welcome text. Uh, laid out for you. Go in and make changes to that so they fit exactly what that customer is looking for. Cool. Now that's going to be that's going to be key to making it authentic and making it you. Um, if you want to use our stuff, that's great. But we highly recommend people go in and, and uh, edit those to to fit their personal style. All right. So sure. here, do you have automated open house templates here that are? Uh huh. Okay. Cool. So then. I mean, let's yeah. talk about templates uh, here because now I have a question on templates. Thanks for showing me this. Uh, yeah. Templates. Do you have templates? Yeah. Show me all your templates. That's what I wanted to know. All right. So what we're looking at here is um, the templates that I have brought in. So there's three different three different sections here. You've got your team smart plans. This is something that, as an administrator, you can create these smart plans for best practices for your agents to use. But uh, you can also, agents can save their own smart plan. So if they've embedded a video into a welcome email um, or they have a personal messaging part of those plans, they save that as their own plan. So not all agents are, are pirating that, that information, right? But yeah. then you've also got your library. So this is the library that comes based on uh, our studies. We look at open rates. Uh, we provide all that data for you for the open rates. But we've been looking at this. We've worked with coaches and, and successful agents in the area to come up with these, this smart plan library that you can use right out of the box. And these, uh, these are all going to fit all different types of scenarios. Okay? If you find one that you like based on that scenario, everyone loves the birthday card, I can go ahead and take that, uh, I can import that, or sorry, export that smart plan now into my library. And now I've got the birthday card in my smart plan. Okay, so once I've done that, that's when I can go in and edit it however I want. Okay. And uh, and so so with these, I mean, some of these have uh, some of these smart plans have have 25 steps that last that last a year, right? Some of these have four steps that are to be a little bit more aggressive over a two week time frame. Got it. Right. So they're going to all different types of scenarios, but you can add steps if you want to insert There's extra a, steps. Okay, cool. There's a question here. A hunter says, is there an option to purchase download templates and smart plans like there is in lion desk or is it just more like, um, or is it more so it, uh, everything here is free. It's part of it. Yeah. Everything here in this library is the best of the best that we've, that we've found that we include here with the library for free for you. All right, cool. And I know that uh, that we, meaning myself and Nick, are working on throwing in some of our our um, drips as well. So that'll be mm -hmm. part of it as well, where we're not charging anybody for that. Right. And those are going to be those are going to be smart plans that are available for lab code agents, right? So because you've got this thought group that's going on and your best practices, you can make those available for your for the people that have signed up as lab code agents. Can we just so add really, a, a fourth tab right there that says like my smart plan, <laughs> lab code agents, and then team smart plan. And then agents. we can open it up to everybody. I don't care. Just, I just need a tab yeah. out there, Andrew. Discussion. <laughs> discussion. Come on, you guys yeah, have a hundred developers. developers. You guys have a hundred developers. <laughs> hey, but you know, you've never requested it yet. So now that you've requested it, let it. 
<laughs> Stop giving me pushback, damn it. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to be a why, why we don't already have that in there, I couldn't tell you. I love it. Dude, well, this is uh, this is more than I thought. Um, actually, this is more than I'm using, so this is pretty cool. I love that. Yeah. Uh, I love well, that. Here's you, the thing. Will you, will you cover the workflows as well, Andrew? Just because, um, you know, there's a difference between uh, some automation that is consumer facing or client facing, and then you have some workflows internally within your business. Um, right there, you see plan types, all drip campaigns, workflows, automation, AI, um, et cetera. Uh, the workflows, think of something internally, right? So maybe your contract to close process. What's really nice about our system is that it's going to carry a lot of the burden when it comes to onboarding people. Because once you set up your work plans, you can actually build your onboarding process for new agents, for transaction coordinators, for assistants, get them kicked off on the workflow type of smart plan. And that's just going to send them a series of tasks that can contain your training materials or the types of obligations that that person is meant to do. Um, so even when it comes to onboarding people or working in the contract to close process, that maybe isn't a consumer facing or a client facing experience, you can still use automation to benefit that part of your business. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, with those with those workflows, there could be a series of tasks that you want to complete for every customer that you have. And so all you have to do is decide what those tasks are. You know, the, the inspection, the photographer, uh, staging, all that kind of stuff is, can be part of, of that specific workflow. Now, what will happen is when you set these up, you can say, all right, I want this, this, this task to be due two days after I've moved it into this new pipeline, right? So there, we're now showing homes or we're now under contract or we're now um, listing, right? So once you've moved that lead into the new pipeline stage, that can enable your workflow of the things that you need to complete. So a series of tasks, and that could be six or eight, 12 tasks, and you can determine when you want to get reminded of those tasks. And so as time goes on, you know, day, day seven comes up and you've got due today the schedule and inspection. What's really cool is you'll be able to manage those tasks um, in your task list, of course. But since we've got that, uh, the, the native app that you download straight to your phone, we can send push notifications. The system is going to tell you, hey, today this task is due. So you're going to get notified through that app on your phone, also through your task list here, when those, certain, when those specific tasks are due so nothing falls through the cracks. So then from here, you can see all your tasks that are due today, the tasks that are due tomorrow, overdue tasks, and um, as you're going through those tasks, if you want to go ahead and postpone one, mm -hmm. um, you've got options to, to, to postpone that or to go ahead and complete it or to send them that email because this is a reminder to email the customer, cool. right, with, uh, with some specific information. And so that's all part of a workflow that, uh, that a team leader or a broker can set as a best practices and then any time that a new lead is put into a specific pipeline, that will enable that task list and the agent will then be notified when those tasks become due. I love it. I love it. All right, guys, anything that we missed that you may want to bring up that I didn't touch on? I don't know. We've covered a lot of good stuff. Randy, did you, uh, can you think of anything that we haven't, that we haven't talked about? Um, you know what, actually, I did get some numbers recently that I wanted to share, uh, just when it comes to marketing, uh, marketing automation, right? Um, and, and this is, so if you will, actually, Andrew, will you pull up the campaign section of the website? So, um, of the CRM, so people, um, know what I'm talking about from the lead generation side. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. You scroll down and check out the campaigns or the, uh, the lead gen. Yeah. So the campaign details. So I, I got some new numbers that I think are really cool. Um, and it just goes to show how, how well Chime has implemented, implement, um, uh, automation, right? So 
Uh, I was going through a presentation that our PPC department's doing, and they just they shared with me that they're now implementing uh, automation of over of over 5,000 different combinations of long tail keywords from a Google PPC perspective okay. that can be as niche as subdivision, home type, um, obviously something like zip codes, but think that hyper-local concept, that's something that we are using uh, automation to make adjustments to your campaigns on, a, uh, on average over 5,000 times a month, which okay. is a huge number. That's massive. And something that Chime does so well is provide transparency into your ads. So part of the onboarding process with our PPC team is actually uh, critiquing and adding uh, your own uh, insight into the types of ads uh, that we're running, right? So we'll use your own personal experience of knowing your market and knowing where you want to get leads in conjunction with the automation and the data that we're able to pull through our marketing reports and allow our clients to really uh, take uh, full control over the results of their marketing. So if you see um, in this example here, you've got uh, some Google ads and, and, and one Facebook dare ad here. If you click on that, mm -hmm. you can actually see the ad we're running for you. So I challenge you today, if anyone's using lead generation through another uh, vendor, yeah. What type of what type of instant transparency do you have into the ads that they're running for you? And if you scroll down, you can actually comment on what you think. You know, I love it. I hate it. Perfect. And we'll use our automation to make sure that you get the best possible experience. Beautiful, man. Thank you for showing us that. I love that. And that's obviously looks like it's a lead ad and it's a um, carousel lead ad as well. So here's. Mm -hmm. Here's a question that we had. So I'll, I'll close with this. Uh, Hunter says, question for you. As a KW agent, can you tell me the biggest difference between Chime and Command? Sounds like they do a lot of the same things, smart plans, agent side, et cetera, but Command is free. Uh, good to, it's, a, it's a good question only because they seem to do the same thing, Hunter. And look, I love Keller Williams tech, and I think they're heading in the right direction, but they're missing a large portion of what I need as a team and as an individual agent. And that comes down to the artificial intelligence portion of this and the automated portion of this. You have with Chime, not only do you have Dare ads, which is dynamic ads for real estate, that's massive. For me to be able to upload my whole database into something that's being remarketed to bring people back from the dead and not having to do that myself uh, it is, is really the number one thing I'm using right now. And the number one thing most teams at a high level are using when it comes down to technology. Yeah, That's number one. Sure. Uh, number two is I don't have to do the ads myself, right? On, on KW Command, yeah, it's free, but you're also having to run the ads and create them yourself. And they're lead ads and they're limited as to the targeting that you can do. Uh, it's a tool really so that most Keller Williams agents can do it if they need to on their own and save money. But when it comes to me being able to leverage everything around me, I want to use the best. And right now, if you don't have the capability of doing this and running it for me, it's not the best, right? It's all about leverage. So that, that sure. just comes along. How can I learn more about dare? Great answer, by the way. Oh, Hunter. Great. Uh, Dare is really easy. I'll break it down for you in 30 seconds. Dare is dynamic ads for real estate. Facebook came up with it about two and a half years ago. And it's specifically for real estate where they need a catalog of properties to be able to send to the consumer through Facebook or Instagram. And then as the consumer engages with this IDX feed, on their feed on Facebook or Instagram, then Facebook starts narrowing down which properties to send you on Facebook and Instagram based on what you're clicking at. So let's say Hunter, you're clicking on properties that are 400,000, three bedroom, two bath. Well, Facebook's gonna send you more just like that through your website on Chime. And yep. now I'm not having to nurture you as much because I'm relying on Chime's and Facebook's technology to do that for me. And then the AI starts engaging with you 
then the properties start coming out and then you have questions. It's like, oh, I wanna see this one. Oh, I have a question on this one. Or you, Hunter, as the agent, that's my uh, alarm there. Or you, Hunter, as the agent can then start saying, well, you know what? So-and-so is looking at property so much, I may wanna reach out to them. And so that's the power of dynamic ads. That's the power also of not having to run your own ads because I don't wanna to have to worry about running my own Google AdWords. I don't wanna to have to figure out the long tail words. I just wanna be able to tell Randy or whoever, hey Randy, can you tweak this? Because uh, I'm noticing people in Malibu are looking a lot more for condos around Pepperdine University, right? He's like, yeah, let me get on mm -hmm. it. Same thing with dynamic ads for real estate. I want to be able to just leverage as much as I, I can, right? So uh, Hunter Chime comes with an ads manager. Yes, they do. Uh, and they also there's also a cost for it because they're, they are running your ads for you. And I believe if you're spending over $1,000 a month, it's going to be 10%, guys. Am I right? 15%. Uh, Damn it. You made it more expensive, Andrew. It's 15%, Hunter. Uh, but they run everything for you and you can just go to them to tweet things. And uh, that's what I'm doing. And I'm not saying that KW's uh, product isn't good, isn't good or even great. It is, but it's just for a different audience. That's all. And that's why it works for some people. Mm -hmm. Any other yeah, questions? We agree. Uh, Kim says for buyer legion, do do programs run out of our ad accounts or out of Chimes ad accounts? Uh, they're going to run off of your personal account, right? Mm -hmm. And so right. it's that you see uh, you have total control over, uh, which, is, which is a good thing, right? You're running it off of yours. So if you need to tweak anything later, or if you just need to continue this, if for any reason you're not using Chime in the future, it still stays with you in your account there. So you have total yep. control over it, Kim. Um, perfect. I love to dive into the data, even if I'm not running the program. That's right. I always like to see what they're running, what they're not running. And even when it comes to mm -hmm. Google, they're still running it off of your uh, Google AdWords. So it connects it to there and you can see on the back end what's happening, what words are using, what keywords they're using. Uh, so it benefits you in the long run as well. Uh, I spend less than a thousand a month on my Facebook ads. What percent do I pay to them? Uh, is it the same percentage or is it more guys? I don't know. If it's a thousand uh, so, less. Yeah, so you, you've, got, you've got options. If you're going to do the, uh, we've got a $300 or $600 campaign that you can do, then the management fee on that is $100. So if it's when you get to $1,000 or more, that's when it's 15%. Cool. All right, guys, I think we, we can use this recording as a demo. <laughs> I didn't think about that. Yeah. I'll send this over to you. <laughs> <laughs> please yeah. do. Well, and, yeah, please do. Uh, a final word here. We've got we've got some uh, cool deals that we've got going on for people who who register in March. And so, if you're interested in knowing more about all of this, we can take a deep dive. I can walk you personally through the platform, show you everything. Um, we got some pretty sweet deals going on. So uh, this is a great time to get it going before it gets super busy going into the next few months. Get this all in place now. So you're not trying to figure out, you know, which, which birthday card you want to send to your customers when uh, you've got, you know, when you've got listings you're trying to get on there and uh, people you're showing homes to because it will get busier. So get this in place now before it gets too busy. Yeah, I put up a link there. Uh, if you can't find it, just find me on Facebook and message me. I'll connect you to Randy and, and Randy can work on the rest. Does, does that okay. run on Facebook and Instagram, Google? Um, so... Dare only runs on Facebook and Instagram. Google runs off of their Google search platform. Those are the ad words that come out in a different color at the top or on the side. Um, that's, yep. that's the difference on, on both. So a good question. Yep. We, do a mix, we do a mixture of both with an ad budget. So when you have an ad budget, we allocate a certain percentage to each one of those places. Um, but if you have a strong preference one way or another, we can adjust that percentage. So that's just something you can talk to our, our team about and say, you really prefer one thing over the other. We'll make that happen. Agreed. All right, guys. Good right. one. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thanks for being on, Randy. Andrew, uh, next time yeah. you guys tune into this one, it's going to be in April. And we're thinking that it's probably going to cover long-term nurture. Maybe we get one or two top agents using this so we can see how that long-term nurture works with teams or, or mega teams. Yes, sir.
Thanks, guys. Hey. Yeah, guys. Thank you all for taking Thank time. You. you owe it to yourself to go audit your business and see how much automation you're using. If you feel like you're not using enough, come get a personal demo from John. Thanks, guys. Okay. Thank Take you. It easy.